Your stomach acid is strong enough to dissolve razor blades, but your stomach lining regenerates fast enough to protect you. Strong stomach acid is an evolutionary tool, and we humans are in the top 10 strong acid creatures on the planet. This means we can dissolve a whole lot. The only creatures that are better at this game than us are ones like crocodiles, sharks, and vultures that dissolve bones and hooves. Inside every human, there exists a force that is both invisible and undeniable. A heat that moves beneath the surface. This force is called a fire within. Physically, it is tied to the metabolism that turns food into motion, the stomach acids that break down the strongest materials. But Agni is far more than a digestive function. It is the alchemical furnace of the subtle life forces. It governs how the living system transforms raw matter into usable energy. It is the reason a meal nourishes the body, and a deep conversation nourishes the spirit. Digestive forces work through discrimination. The gut and the mind must separate nourishment from excess. A strong mental digestion knows what deserves extraction and what does not. Weak digestion treats everything as equally important, which overwhelms the system. For us humans, emotion is particularly dependent on this inner digestion. Feelings require processing. The digestive mind transforms hard complex enzymes of sadness and anger. When the fire is strong, the mind extracts meaning and lets go of the rest. When it weakens, impressions accumulate on and on. That is why people with balanced mental fire often feel that life teaches them directly. Experiences do not remain accidental and chaotic. They arrange themselves into a big picture of understanding. It is no secret that most stories of humanity are misrepresented, and so we have a very peculiar idea of heaven and hell. It's either one or the other. Or maybe both of them are schizophrenic, fever dream of religions. And yet, there are so many more prisms that we can see the flames of hell. In this case, our attention will be on the cleansing and extractive power of infernal fire, a bath for the soul. We only think there is a complete difference between water and fire, but they are both elemental expressions of the same force, with different characters. Fire and water are siblings of transformation, two faces of a single, universal alchemy. Water softens, dissolves, washes away the obvious stains, but it is patient, slow and subtle. Fire consumes and penetrates on a much quicker scale. The infernal fire extracts the essence. In Zoroastrianism, fire consumes falsehood without touching truth. Even in early Christian mysticism, the flames of purgatory and hell are not punitive. They are the final bath, a heat that purges illusions and residues. Agni bridges body and mind in ways rarely acknowledged in Western discourse. Emotions are digested, just as food is. Unresolved feelings linger like undigested matter, producing internal toxicity that manifests physically and cognitively. To understand Agni is to understand the intimate mechanics of vitality, the invisible rhythms that turn raw existence into lived experience. When this force is healthy, impressions pass through smoothly. A harsh comment stings, then dissolves. A strong emotion rises, expresses itself, then settles. A memory appears, teaches, and releases. You see the difference? The mind feels spacious because nothing clings. When mental digestion slows, impressions remain half-processed. Thoughts circle instead of completing. Feelings linger, even if you rationally think they are already irrelevant. This is how rumination forms. The mind keeps chewing the same experience because it never extracted what it needed. Ancient texts describe this as undigested mental residue. A kind of psychic heaviness that clouds perception and drains energy. A well-digested mind feels light. It knows how to receive the world and then let it go. In the ancient books, we read that all senses digest. 
Each sense is a form of Agni, a living fire that receives raw input and transforms it into experience. Hearing is digestion of vibration. When this fire weakens, voices might replay. Undigested vibration keeps echoing inside. Smell digests the atmosphere. Sense bypass thought and enter directly into the nervous system. This is why smell was considered the most powerful and dangerous of all senses. Today incense is just mass-produced product, but what well-made incense can do is no joke. Touch is also a big one. Touch digests contact. When touch digestion is healthy, contact feels grounding and safe. This is why ritual touch, massage, bathing and oiling were considered psychological and spiritual care. Across all senses, the same rule applies. Perception must be transformed. Mental overload is often sensory indigestion. This is what scrolling reels or TikTok looks like. Bunch of sound and images. In fact, this content we eat with our eyes is barely digested and only accumulates in recesses of our minds. Decision-making is another expression of mental agony. Clear decisions arise when inner fire discriminates well. Weak agony produces hesitation and second-guessing, while excessive agony produces impulsivity. The Vedas speak of agony as the first god invoked because no ritual, nourishment, prayer, or understanding could happen without transformation. What enters him never leaves unchanged. In the Rig Veda, Ani is described as the mouth of the gods. Mind you, this is a precise translation. Offerings placed into fire are converted into something subtle enough to reach the divine, because it is considered that humans cannot approach truth or order directly. Experience must be refined. Raw material requires a medium that can translate it. Agni is that medium. Agni is praised as the priest of the sacrifice, the divine minister, the one who brings the gods to the ritual. The logic is such that the gods eat through fire. Whatever humans wish to offer, food, gratitude, prayer, must pass through Agni first. Without fire, the offering remains inert, unreadable to the divine order. It is clear gods do not consume matter directly, they consume essence. Fire is the translator. It converts the gross into the subtle, the visible into the invisible. Try giving rice to a rock, and it will become a dirty rock. Give that same rice to a person, and it will get transformed into a completely different thing. What was once not me, becomes me. Same story with grief. Grief meets one person and turns into bitterness and repetition. It meets another and becomes depth, empathy and maturity. Time applied to an unused instrument produces decay. Time applied to a practicing musician produces skill. Speak a sentence to a wall and it remains sound. Speak it to a human and it can become understanding offense, courage, and whatnot. Air vibrations turn into emotion and action because the listener has a mental fire capable of processing meaning. Without that fire, words remain noise. We constantly feed on the music and the things we watch, and most people underestimate how literal this process is. Over time, these inputs train the mind the same way food trains the body. What you consume regularly becomes your inner life. When someone loops the same emotional frequency day after day, it starts to feel like home. Sad music sharpens sadness until melancholy feels intelligent. Aggressive content keeps the body slightly clenched, always ready for conflict. Fast cut videos shorten patience and make stillness uncomfortable. The brain adapts by reorganizing itself around what it receives most often. Attention, mood and thought patterns quietly align with your diet. This is why people develop emotional cravings that have nothing to do with logic. In ancient Iran, long before empires learned to write their own propaganda, fire lived at the center of Zoroastrian life as a conscious presence called Atar. 
Fire temples were built around a single flame that carried lineage, sometimes traced across centuries, moved carefully from place to place during war or exile, guarded like a living elder. People always have seen fire as purifier and so have mythical birds. Most famous name for it is of course, Phoenix. Near the end of its long life, the bird gathers resins, woods, spices. It creates something that looks almost like a nest. When the phoenix settles into it, its body rests into the heat, the way a thought rests into understanding. Fire rises gradually, surrounding the bird, drawing everything into a single intensity. A smart bird that it is, phoenix knows that all flesh rots, and so preservation of things only buys us time. The myth teaches that continuity requires completion. The fire that consumed the old body leaves behind only what is essential, the residue of life distilled to its purest form. Feathers, flesh, and years of accumulated memory dissolve into warmth and light. What remains is a concentrated essence. This and many other stories in history of humankind reveal to us the role of fire within and without, as without is also a form of within. Kalagni means the fire of time, or time's fire in Sanskrit, representing a powerful, transformative, and destructive force in Hinduism, often an epithet for Lord Shiva, symbolizing the end of cycles and the ultimate dissolution of the universe, as well as the divine energy that consumes impurities and initiates new creation. Sun is one of such forces too. It cooks us alive while we are warming our bones on it. Time is the substance from which I am made. Time is a river which carries me along, but I am the river. It is a tiger that devours me, but I am the tiger. It is a fire that consumes me, but I am the fire.